So welcome everybody to my lecture in International Monetary Economics. I would like to talk about Chapter 15, Money, Interest Rates and Exchange Rates. In the beginning, I would like to talk about how we are setting up a macroeconomic model. Please have a look at the following eight steps. In the first step, we define the equilibrium conditions and afterwards we derive the slope of the curves. In the third step, we determine the equilibrium and then it really becomes important. We identify a macroeconomic shock and it is always an exogenous variable which changes in the beginning. We have to find out which curve shifts in which direction and we use the equations to find an answer to this question. Afterwards, uh, we are coming up with a graphical analysis. We shift the curves and determine the new equilibrium. We confirm the graphical results by computing the multipliers. We compare the graphical analysis to the multipliers and we conclude. Let's start with the first step. Uh, we define the equilibrium conditions. In the first equation, you can see the goods market equilibrium condition. On the left hand side, we have goods supply and on the right hand side, we have goods demand. Uh, you can see that there is a bar above Y, so uh, income is capacity constrained. We are analyzing an economy where unemployment is not a problem at all. So we are leaving the Keynesian situation where we have 25% unemployment rate and we are switching to a situation where the economy is working at the capacity constraint. The second equation, this is the money market equilibrium condition. On the left hand side, we have real money supply and on the right hand side, we have real money demand. Real de money demand consists out of two components. Um, the first component is in relation to income. So the transaction motive plays a role. And then we have a minus lambda R. So also the opportunity cost of holding money plays a role in the money market equilibrium condition. The third equation, this is a kind of UIP condition. In case that we have complete capital mobility, the interest rate of the domestic economy has to be equal to the interest rate of the foreign economy. Let's have a closer look at the goods market equilibrium condition. Um, on the right hand side, as I mentioned already, we have goods, dem goods demand. And there are like three components which play a role. The exchange rate E, uh, P star and minus P. This is a log of the real exchange rate and it indicates that in case that the real exchange rate goes up, in case that the domestic currency depreciates in real terms, then demand for domestic goods increases. We have a second term which uh, depends on the income level. For example, this could reflect uh, consumption in case that Y would increase, demand for domestic goods would also increase. And then the last component is G and this uh, indicates government spending. On this right hand side of this equation, we don't have an investment function. So we are assuming that investment doesn't play a role. Goods demand does not depend in a negative way on the domestic interest rate. On the next slide, uh, you can see the um, Greek letters, Delta, Gamma, Phi and Lambda. And we always assume that these Greek letters, these parameters are constant. They do not change. On slide number seven, you can see the denotation of the symbols. We have three endogenous variables. This makes perfectly sense because we have three equilibrium conditions and hence we can solve for three endogenous variables. P, this is a domestic price level. E is a nominal exchange rate. So in a floating exchange rate system, the nominal exchange rate is an endogenous variable. The nominal exchange rate can change in case that an exogenous shock occurs. The last endogenous variable, this is the domestic interest rate R. The following variables are exogenous, P star, foreign price level, M, nominal money supply, 
Y bar, domestic output level, and R star, the foreign interest rate. It is always very important that you know what kind of variables are endogenous, what kind of variables are exogenous. This is very important for the analysis part because it will always be the case that a shock occurs with an exogenous variable and afterwards we'll try to find out how does this change of an exogenous variable will change the endogenous variable. So how is this shock digested? Once more, it is important that the domestic output is exogenous, output is capacity constraint, and therefore I put a bar above the variable y. In a first step, I would like to determine uh, the IS curve, which should symbolize the goods market equilibrium condition. Let's uh, put forward to, to slide number 10. We want to draw this line in a diagram where we have the price level on the vertical axis and the exchange rate level on the horizontal axis. And therefore, it makes perfect sense to uh, solve the first equation for the price level P, because then it is very easy to determine the slope of the IS curve. This is what we are going to do in several steps. So um, equation four, this is a goods market equilibrium condition. And we so want to solve this equation for the goods price level P. So in a first step, we put um, Y from the right-hand side of the equation to the left-hand side. It pops up with a negative sign. And we also put G on the other-hand side of the equation so that it pops up with a negative sign. When we uh, divide by uh, delta, uh, we get equation six. So we have isolated the real exchange rate on the left-hand side. Afterwards, we can put uh, P on the other-hand side of the equation. So it pops up with a positive sign. We put the Y term on the left-hand side, pops up with a negative sign. And we also put minus G delta on the other-hand side of the equation. And it pops up with a positive sign in equation 7. So more or less, we are uh, done because of the fact that uh, we have isolated P on the left-hand side of this equation. So now we can t uh, write a total differential and uh, we write a D in front of each variable. Here, it is very important that we know what kind of ladder symbolizes a variable and what kind of um, ladder symbolizes a parameter. The Greek letters are parameters. We said that these uh, parameters do not change and therefore we do not write a D in front of the Greek letters. So here we write a D in front of each variable. Afterwards, uh, we have to consider that we are interested in the slope of the IS curve in a price exchange rate diagram. So we have to compute DP over DE. All other variables are held constant so that their changes are equal to zero. The whole equation 9 collapses to equation 10, dp is equal to de, and hence when we compute the slope of the IS curve dp over de, the slope is equal to 1, 1 is larger than 0, and hence the IS curve has a positive slope. This is already derived uh, in this uh, graph. You can see uh, a positive upward sloping IS curve in a price exchange rate diagram. And the intersection of the IS curve with the vertical line, with the vertical axis, is given by this expression uh, on the intersection. This uh, expression is derived in the following way. When we look at equation number 8, and we set the exchange rate equal to 0, exchange rate equal to zero because of the fact that the vertical axis will uh, intersect with the horizontal axis at the value E is equal to zero. Then the right hand side, P star, the Y term and the G term determine the Y intercept. Okay, um, we have uh, thought about the slope of the IS curve. Slope is determined now. Uh, afterwards, we have to think about when does the IS curve shift. The IS curve will shift upwards in case that the foreign price level will increase, or in case that government spending increases, 
or in case that the output level would decrease, then the IS curve will shift upwards. The IS curve does not shift if the domestic price level P or the nom nominal foreign exchange rate E change because these variables are displayed on the vertical or the horizontal axis and hence we would move along the same IS curve. Let's have a look at the other two equations like equation 2 money market equilibrium condition and equation 3 the UIP condition R is equal to R star. When we plug in equation 3 into equation 2 we get equation 11. So instead of R uh, in equation 2, we are inserting R star and then once more we solve this equation for P because we want to derive an LM curve in a diagram where we have P on one hand side of the equation, on one hand side of the axis and M on the other hand side of the axis. Good, let's uh, compute the slope of the LM curve. We have isolated P on the left hand side of this equation. Uh, we take the total differential. Once more, we write a D in front of each variable, but not in front of the parameters. We are interested in the ratio DP DM because we want to draw this LM curve in a diagram where we have the price level on the vertical axis and uh, the money supply on the horizontal axis. All other variables are held constant so that their changes are equal to zero. We are getting equation 14, dp is equal to dm. When we put dm on the other hand side of the equation, we get dp over dm is equal to one. And this is also larger than zero so that also the LM curve has a positive slope of one. This is uh, given in this diagram. LM curve has a positive slope of 1. And you can also see those variables which determine the intersection of the LM curve with the vertical axis. A few last comments with respect to the shift of the LM curve. The LM curve will shift upwards in case that the foreign interest rate increases or in case that the output level decreases. The LM curve does not shift if nominal money supply M or the price level P change because these vari variables are displayed on the vertical or the horizontal axis and hence we can move along the same LM curve. Let's put these two diagrams together. On the left hand side we have uh, displayed equation 2 and equation 3 and we derived the LM curve and then we can also insert the right part of this diagram where we have the goods market equilibrium condition displayed in a price exchange rate diagram. Now in case that the central bank assumes that money supply M is the appropriate amount of money for this economy, we can determine the price level in the equilibrium and we can also determine the exchange rate level. So this is the equilibrium in the initial situation. Let's go back to one slide which we were looking at in the beginning of this lecture. So we were looking at this structure here on slide number three. So we have defined the equilibrium conditions. We have derived the slope of the curves and we have also um, determined the equilibrium. So we are done with uh, step one, two and three. And now what follows is we want to check how exogenous shocks are digested. We are proceeding in this way that we are shocking an exogenous variable and then we want to find out how the endogenous variables will react. <music>